Hello, welcome to the Lion's Den. I'm Tracy, and today we're going to be talking about Ash Wednesday. Do you remember way back before Christmas, we had the season of Advent? You may have had an Advent calendar at home to help you count down the days of the season until Christmas Day. Advent is a time of preparing for the celebration of Jesus' birth, as we have learned that he would grow up to teach us to know God better and sacrifice himself on the cross to save us from our sins. Advent is a time of getting ready to celebrate. Some things you might do during Advent include buying gifts, decorating your house, writing Christmas cards, visiting family and friends, and making special food. Ash Wednesday marks the first day of Lent. Lent is the season of 40 days before Easter. There are six Sundays in Lent that we call Lent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and Palm Sunday. That takes us up to Holy Week, the week before Easter. Lent is a time of preparing for the moment Jesus rises from the dead at Easter in order to show us that death is not the end and that we will be able to look forward to life after death with God in heaven. Like Advent, Lent is a time to get ready. But Lent isn't really meant to be a joyful time. It's more a serious season, where we find ways to say we're sorry to Jesus and to God for the things we haven't done, some of the things we have done that weren't great, and to do things to help us to focus more on God than on the stuff going on around us. There aren't any Lent parties or Lent cards to give or special foods to eat. In fact, Lent is a time for giving up something we like as a way of helping us to think more about God and how we could get to know him better and to do better at living the way he wants us to. But Tracy, I hear you say, the pandemic has already caused us to give up so much and miss out on so much and we didn't even get a choice about what we got to give up. How can we give up even more? Well, I think what we can do this year is take some time to think about the things we had to give up the events we missed out on, and then create something that helps us think about how we're feeling to make this, in a way, the best Lent ever. What do I mean by that? Well, in a way, since you're home more because of all the restrictions on what we can do, that means you can spend more quiet, uninterrupted time thinking about God and how he wants us to live and how we might get to know him better since there's less stuff to do. But just thinking about a thing sometimes isn't enough to get the idea to stay with us. Our brains need a reminder. This is where something like a journal or an art project can help keep the idea in your mind. You can write, paint, draw, build with Lego, or do any other creative activity that you enjoy to create something that helps you reflect on and remember the reason for the season. So, first things first. Let's think about being sorry. Sorry is both a word we say and an emotion we feel. It's not usually a comfortable thing to feel or to say because it means we've hurt someone by what we have done or not done. We hurt someone, we let them down, we didn't do the right thing. That's expected to happen. We aren't perfect. We make mistakes, we lose our temper, we feel mad and bad, and sometimes we just want someone else to feel mad and bad too. But when we realize we've hurt someone, it's important to say you're sorry. It's also important to show you're sorry. Your words and your actions both matter. In fact, Jesus taught us that our actions are even more important than our words. So, for example, if you took a family member's favorite book without asking, and a page got torn while you had it, you need to not only say you're sorry, but also show you're sorry. How could you show you're sorry in that example? Well, you could offer to fix the ripped page or even buy a new copy of the book with your own money. But what if it isn't something obvious, like a torn page? What if you did something not great that only you know about? Well, the first thing is, you are never alone. God loves you and knows you and knows what you're up to. So if you have done or said something wrong, which in church language is called a sin, that you want to say sorry to God for, you can do it now with the prayer we are about to say 
that comes from the Flame Creative Kids blog. When I say, Lord, we are sorry, I'd like you to say that along with me. Okay, so let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you love us and hear us when we pray. We are sorry for the things we have done that have hurt you and others. We have not loved you or others as much as we could. Lord, we are sorry. We have not helped others as Jesus helped us. Lord, we are sorry. We have been impatient. Lord, we are sorry. We have been angry. Lord, we are sorry. We have been jealous of others. Lord, we are sorry. We have told lies. Lord, we are sorry. We have forgotten to pray. Lord, we are sorry. Hear us and help us, Lord. Work through us so that we can share your goodness and love in the world. Show us the joy and new life that Jesus brings. Amen. We usually go to church on Ash Wednesday to be marked on our foreheads with the ashes from palm crosses from last year's Palm Sunday. Since we can't be in church for that this year, we can instead make a simple piece of art that will help us remember that Lent has begun, that we belong to Jesus, we are sorry for our sins, and we believe that Jesus died so we could have everlasting life, a life in heaven that doesn't end after this life is over. I have two examples to show you of the kind of art you might want to make. One is on a black piece of paper and one is on white. You will need painter's tape for this. This is construction grade paper, so it's not very heavy. And you're going to use the painter's tape to make a cross of your choosing and make sure you get the edges all flattened down. The white paper you may wish to fold in half just so you don't have as much to cover. And you're going to make your cross on a slight angle with this one just to be a little bit different. Again make sure all the edges are smoothed out. For this craft you'll need some chalk and what you're going to do is start coloring over top of the chalk to make an outline, or over top of the tape rather, to make an outline. This is one I completed earlier, and I've put the word repent, which is to say sorry, and believe at the bottom. Or you can put other words that have meaning for you. And then we're going to peel off the tape very carefully. And there we have our first cross. It kind of makes me think of the smudged ashes so that's one example. The second, with the folded piece of white paper and the painter's tape cross, is a little more involved. What you're going to do first, actually, is take a gray pencil crayon or a crayon and lightly, just leaving this top corner um, empty, just lightly color over the whole picture so that most of the of the um, card is, is gray all around and over the cross. And you're going to keep going until you filled in the whole background. Okay? Then what you're going to do, um, if you don't have a, a, an ink pad at home, you can use a washable marker and your fingertip, as long as you get your parents' permission, and you're going to draw an oval on your fingertip. Sort of coloring it with the marker like that. And then you're going to press your finger on the paper in different places until the ink is really faint. And then you can color it in again. And you can use different shades. If you have different gray markers, you can use those too. 
and you're just going to keep going until you've filled in all the area where you colored with the gray. And when you get that all done, you will have something that maybe looks a little bit like this. And you can see that I have drawn little faces. I've drawn, taken my pencil and outlined some of the circles and I have drawn little faces. Now this is not an original piece of art for me. This is something I saw online on Sheila Connor's blog from uh, St. Timothy's Episcopal Church in Texas. And I thought it was such a neat picture I wanted to kind of try to do it and see if we could do it ourselves. So that's where the idea came from. So you just carry on filling in the, the little faces and in the original piece of art they each little face had a cross drawn on the forehead and then eyes and a nose and when you get all the faces done the way you want you can peel off the tape very slowly and make sure you wash that fingertip so you don't touch anything with your black ink on your finger and there is an image of a lot of people who've had their um, imposition of ashes on their forehead all around the cross. I thought it was a really neat piece of art and I thank Sheila for posting it on her blog. So those are a couple of examples of the kind of art project you might want to try out in order to reflect and remember that today is Ash Wednesday and it's the beginning of Lent and we have a whole season of activities and things to do to prepare for Easter, that most joyous celebration in the whole Christian calendar. Take care. Bye for now.